Hi, hello. I, I arrived in Kazakhstan in uh, 2011, and uh, my first experience with the local culture was uh, with the taxi driver. <laughs> um, so I entered in the taxi, and um, even though the guy didn't speak English, uh, we were able to sort some small talk. So he started asking me, where are you from? And I answered, I'm from Italy. How old are you? And at that time, I was 26. And then <laughs> he asked as a third question, so I guess in order of priority, are you married? <laughs> and uh, I casually answered, no, I'm not married. The reaction of the taxi driver, despite I couldn't understand Russian, it was very interesting for me because uh, he was kind of upset. You know, he was like, what do you mean? You're 26, you're not married? Big problem, you know? Like, I, I could understand, problema. And, and, like, and the, the reaction again was uh, uh, showing me that he was disappointed with me. Um, I even had a funny thought that maybe he was going to stop a car and, you know, find a random guy and bring us to the registration. <laughs> Joke aside, I've been here six years and I noticed that uh, uh, this is, it was not the last time that a taxi driver was going to ask me this kind of question. Um, being in Kazakhstan and be over 25 years old uh, is not so funny. You, as a woman, as a boy, as a man, uh, have a very heavy pressure from society. You need to get married as soon as possible and to fulfill the standards. So you can make your family happy, your co-worker happy, and maybe the taxi driver. <laughs> um, from my perspective, many girls, not everyone, but many girls, get married, so you can claim to the society that you were chosen, that you are following the standards of this society. Um, but then, <coughs> sorry, you look at the statistic, and what you see is that in Kazakhstan, every third couple is getting a divorce. Another standard that I notice women has to fulfill in this society is uh, virginity. You need to be virgin to be chosen by your future husband. And uh, I also heard that now there is a very good uh, business going on because uh, you can restore the virginity, <laughs> you know, so like you can still play the game. Uh, but um, what I want to say about the virginity is that it doesn't matter if you're pretty, it doesn't matter if you're educated abroad, it doesn't matter if you're funny. If you're not virgin, you're not able to be part of this game. Where I come from, in Italy, as you know, we have the Pope, we have the Church, we are also a very religious country. Virginity is not a sacred issue. A woman that is not virgin is not treated as a prostitute. A woman that has experience, it's just, you know, a woman with experience. And what I notice and what I feel is that maybe that's why Italian girls are a little bit more confident of many other girls in the local society. And then what happened? Then you get married, because you had to. And uh, you're sharing this married life with uh, your husband, which is a new person under the same roof, you know, like you, before you, you were doing something like movie and dating, and now you are under the same roof, and you actually know him deeply. And what you noticed is that something is missing. And what is missing is common goals, common vision. I'm not talking about interest, because healthy couple can have different interests, but what you should make sure before getting married is that you have a common vision. Means what? It means that if you want to be a successful lawyer, 
You need to make sure that your husband, after you get married, will not tell you to stay home, raising nine kids, and prepare food for the visitors that are coming from other town. You want to be sure that your husband likes to go out, or like, he likes to sit home and play video games, and you like to have a, you know, a, a social life. This will not be harmful afterwards, because things will not change after you get married. Things will stay the same. So, whoever you are before the marriage is not going to come and be sorted out afterwards. So you want to be sure that the person that you're going to share the life with is going to be the same one that is sharing your same vision. Because if this doesn't happen, you know again what happened. Divorce. Unhappy woman. Miserable couples. Another thing that I noticed is that sometimes you are not getting married only with your husband, but you're adding your parents. Hard? So, let me tell you. Getting married is very hard because you are you know, sharing time with another human being, another head, another brain, another you know, habits. Adding relatives on this couple, it's a horror movie. Um, I have been witness of situation when a woman would get married with a husband, like a couple, and the husband will tell her, my mother is visiting us for a couple of months. Then she would ask after a couple of months, so she's leaving? And the husband would get very ma mad with her because he would think that she doesn't like the mother-in-law. And so this is like, you know, this is again, something that creates unhappy woman and creates again fights and creates divorce again. So, the consequences of this are pretty clear. And um, me and my husband, which is here today, we got married in 2014. And when I came back in Kazakhstan, because we got married in Istanbul, I was, you know, very proud of myself. So I went out on the street, I put my hands out, and I'm waiting for the taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there and say, come on, I'm ready for you, you know? <laughs> so the taxi driver stopped, I entered in the car, and I'm like having an evil smile, because I know, you know? So he's like, Viat Kuda. <laughs> I'm like, I'm from Italy. And then they all have the same you know, priority. And he's like, how old are you? I'm 29. Are you married? Yes! <laughs> I'm married, you know? <laughs> Wait, it's not, it's not good. And then he goes like, do you have kids? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't have kids. I'm, you know, like, I was almost happy that I fulfilled the standards. Uh, but then, again, I failed. Um, but this was even worse, you know, guys, because uh, the, this time it was harder for me. He started asking me very personal question. Why you don't have kids? You're 29. You're old. Do you know that maybe your kids, if you're going to have one, they're not going to be healthy? And I'm thinking, maybe he's going to have three eyes. I don't know why he's not going to be healthy. Maybe you have some problem with your, you know, reproduction equipment. Maybe your husband is not good. Once I even experienced a taxi driver who told me, if I were your husband, I would have made you pregnant from the first night until I finish and I decide that you are enough. This it was a real violence for me. It was a moral violence, and I think nobody should ask you when, where are your kids? Because the reason can be so many, you know? You can have some problem. You want to wait. Maybe you, you, know, you want to focus on your career. But why should I feel inadequate in this society? Because I don't have kids. Why I cannot wait when is my time to have kids? And then, let's forget for a minute about the taxi driver. You need to have babies. 
you need to make boys, because you have girls, then again, is another problem, you know? You need to make your husband, your family, your relative proud of you. But what if you don't want to have kids? What if you don't want to make this decision now and wait to focus on your career? What if I want to travel and enjoy life? Again, why should I feel inadequate? Making kids is not about what other people want. And then when I see, I see many girls feeling not matching the circle of their friends because all other girlfriends are 25 with three kids. And you know, you, you think maybe I'm wrong. Um, and you think that you need to follow the rules uh, and you have to make kids as soon as possible. But let me tell you, be a mother is not what other people wish or what your girlfriends are doing surrounding you. Babies are not an accessories. Babies are not an object that you leave to your mother or to your nannies because you got a divorce and then you need to find another husband. Maybe babies are not something that you do to keep your husband tied to you. Kids are a result of a happy relationship. And uh, kids should live in an environment made of two parents. So what can I say after all I have noticed so far in this country? That we could drop the number of divorce. We could have confidence women successful in their business and successful in their private life. We could have more babies with two parents. How to do this? Listen to yourself. Understand what you want. Look at their culture. Take a gap year, live abroad. We are living nowadays in a time where everything is accessible. Our world is not the same of 50 years ago. There is no border. Everybody can access to anybody else. So, if you want to have kids when you're young, do it. If you want to wait, do it. The only question that I suggest you to ask yourself is, do I want this now, today? Thank you.